What is good friends, we are back with Mr. Jamet's third game. The men's meet is one and one. He plays versus Meeps. I think Meeps is playing for Central and they can still make it into um, the next round. I think this is the team he um he made a team building video about this team. Uh, it's life of HPIs, Bug Buzz, Young Mega with speed boost, with air slash. I don't remember if it was, um, I think it was Life of MBQ with Sword Stance, Player of Shadow Sneak, Shadow Claw. Uh, it was Mega Venusaur with, I think, Leech Sheet. He might have changed the team a bit, expecting, like, depending on his opponent. Because um, this is, if you if you know your opponent might be Chansey, this is going to be Ground Z Dougie. But he does miss a Player of. Landris got up rocks. He switched out his uh, Venusaur, potentially scouting for a Z move turn one, is what I assume. He didn't want to get Sky Striked. He does show U turn, which makes me think that he's defensive Landrus. We would have found out if he's Rocky Helmet or Lefties. Like if he's Rocky Helmet, now nah, we wouldn't have found out if he's Lefties because he unted out. But if he was Helmet, we would have seen that if the player of hit. Mantine doesn't defog on that much if Meeps plays it well. Not sure if the Dougie is going to be Scarf. Like it depends, like I said, what Jamet expects his opponent to bring. Because if the Dougie is Scarf, the Manectric is in trouble. Because it can't. It can't fully click Volt Switch if the Dougie comes in on that. And HPIs I think is a roll. I don't know. It might kill It might kill with Stealth Rocks up. Um, we're gonna calc that real quick. But he's probably just gonna go on a Venusaur here. Like I think that Meeps will fear the Duck Trio being Scarfed. Just because Jammet brought Scarf Dougie in week 1. And uh, not in week 1, in his first game of World Cup. So I don't think he will click Volt Switch here, right? Oh, he will be at least think about this for a while before he clicks it and consider the options um my neck trick hpis oh i have two my neck tricks versus dark trio yeah it's a roll and with rocks up it still doesn't kill guaranteed i think 75 percent chance to kill after rocks I don't think Jem is going harder to Dougie, but I'm not sure. Like, I can see definitely see him Volt switching, but he just stays in. So, is he gonna just play rough? He has the double Intimidate, so he's gonna do absolutely nothing. And we do see it's defensive Rocky Helmet Landris. So, looking at Meep's team. Uh, which one is the Choice Garf user? He is a bit weak to Volcarona, so he might be Choice Garf Greninja. But he might also be um, Ash Greninja with Water Shuriken. But if that is his way of checking Volcarona, Ash Greninja with Water Shuriken, that's not the best answer, especially when you have Tapu Lily that might prevent the priority from going off, like with the Psychic Terrain. So I think this might be uh, Scarf Greninja. Uh, Z move Tapu Lily or Z move Tapu Bulu. I could see the Lily being Shed Shell or Twisted Spoon, the Tapu Bulu being Z move. Uh, this already shot um, Stealth Rocks, right? So yeah, Z-Move is gonna be on this or this. And this is either the Sub-Toxic Trend, or maybe like a Taunt Trend with like Toxic Lava Plume and Elf Power. But the thing is, like the, the Trend is not gonna have Rocks, this already showed Rocks. I don't think he would have two Stealth Rocks setters. The thing is, um, most Trends these days are Substitute because of Duck Tree, right? So you can like at least have some chance of playing around like you have a chance to play around like you don't get trapped by Dagi all the time if you can keep a substitute up after killing something Dagi can just come in and revenge you and most of them run magma storm just also so you can if the Dagi has a sash you can kill them with the secondary effect if you have a substitute up if you have lava plume you would have to get a 30 percent chance burn and so he does go for swords dance which um evens out his the two drops from the intimidate I think he's Jolly Mimikyu if I recall correctly, so if the Lily is not Choice Scarf, the Mimikyu is faster. Uh, I'm kind of thinking this Choice, he brought us out really confident, thinking that he's faster than the Mimikyu. He might also just go back into Landorus. 
to um, get Rocky Helmet on this. But yeah, if he Scarf Tap Lily, he's gonna stay in here, obviously. Uh, I think Jembat just has to sack this. Um, he doesn't really have good switch ins. Yeah, it's Choice Scarf Tap Lily. Unless the Mimikyu is adamant. But I think it's Jolly Mimikyu. Uh, yeah, Mimikyu. That is really interesting that he's Choice Scarf, um, Tapu Lele. Because I don't know how he prevents Volcarona from sweeping him then. Because the water, like, if the Greninja's Water Shuriken, that's not reliable, like I said, to check Volcarona. And, like, not, not, if you're not in your Ash form, it doesn't even do that much to Volcarona. But even if you're in the Ash form, you prevent Water Shuriken from going off with your own Tapu Lele, which is super weird. So I either didn't expect Jammer to bring Volcarona or he has some other tech. Then maybe he has uh, Stone Edge on this. Um, I don't know if he had Stone Edge on... Maybe he has Stone Edge on Landris too. Like just to prevent Volcarona from setting up, he might have some moves on some of his Pokemon. But yeah, Jammer knows this is Choice Scarfed and Manta can eat this up. So he can uh, get off the Defog here. I think Defog is, Defogging is fine. I mean, Meeps also doesn't have the best switch-ins to Scald. Potentially Greninja, depending on the set, but if it's Ash Gwen, it's not gonna be a good switch into Mantine. Um, and Aura's game just started... Okay, that did a lot, so Roost would have been the correct play then. I did not think he would stay in, but he predicted the Defog, and now Jammed is gonna be forced into his Magnus Zone, and that does a lot, because the Mag... Uh, this is Choice Scarf, if I recall correctly. I can see Meeps going into... Um, hmm. Heatran, Heatran or um, Greninja or Manectric. Um, I think the problem is he obviously doesn't want to go Heatran on a potential Volt Switch and get trapped by Dougie or on a double switch. But I'm predicting him to go for Flash Can here because there's a Landris. And he does go for Voltage. Oh my god, somebody stopped Jamvet. I probably would have... Yeah, I was thinking about going into one of these three, so I would have gone blown away. He's Shed Shell Heatran. Shed Shell Heatran. <laughs> so then it makes a lot of sense why he made that play. The man said LMFA. <laughs> yeah, this is funny. U turns out, preventing the Menton from going for Roost. Really nice play. Oh, if he went for Rocks, the Menton would have um, gone lefty, so I can understand that play. So he's just gonna click Psychic here. I don't think Gem has good answers for that. Magnezone would get to it KO'd. I'm pretty sure Magnezone is slower than Choice Scarf Tapu Lily. Yeah, it is slower. And Aura's game just started, but like I said, I'm gonna be focusing on the Sun and Moon games. But if there's two Sun and Moon games. Oh, Flaming Victini is also playing with Goao? Oh well. I'm gonna focus on this game. He's just gonna click Psychic here, like I said. Like, the Jammed game is just too hype. I have a secondary laptop right over there, and I could record the other game over there, but I should have organized this better. And uh, He did Sack of the Duck Tree, so that confirms that he wasn't Sash, so he was either Scarf or Z-Move. I assume he was... Um, I assume it was Z-move on the Dougie. And yeah, now he has to now he has to predict correct between flash cannoning and volt switching and Jammed is in a tough spot. His team UK is um 9 and 15. I don't think they can make playoffs. Maybe if they win every game that they have left. Yeah, it looks over. I don't think Jamet can win this. Doubles out into Mantan, which would have covered the Landris. I think he bricked the Landris and he went to get more lefties. But he lost his duck here to potentially stop this from Volt switching. And now Tabu Lily is gonna come back in. He has one more turn of terrain. Uh, either Tabu Lily or. 
Heatran, but I think he would go Tapu Lele here. Greninja is an option if he has extra sentry. But I don't think he's extra sentry Greninja on this team. Like Lele and Tren are like two good answers to Venusaur. You don't need extra sentry, I don't think. He's just gonna click Psychic. Something dies here, like this is getting too hit KO'd. And he doesn't really have switch in. Mantang still can't switch in. Yeah, so if you roosted with Mantan earlier, it might have been a different story. But I can understand Jemet's play because if he roosts and the opponent switches out, the rocks are still there, so he kind of had to defog. I don't know if you want to call that a 50 50. I'm not a big fan of calling that a 50 50. But, like, Meeps made the correct play earlier by just attacking the Manta and Psychic Terrain boosting Psychic and just Manta and being more fist dive orientated probably on this team. Worked out that worked out pretty well for Meeps. It is probably doesn't kill, so he can roost up here. But the thing is, Nectar comes in and gets a free Volt Switch. I mean, I want to look at the Flame Victini game real quick. Like, just real quick look over it. Flamiritini brought like balance with Zapdos, probably Volt Switch into Mega Hero. Now he has Discharge, okay. So it's uh, maybe Rocks Clef and Spikes on Pharaoh and then Scarf Chomp or Z Move Chomp. Uh, like one of these two can be the Z Move, but the other one can be the Scarf. Uh, he just brings in the Clef, it's Magic Guard, he's gonna get up. Oh, I thought he would have got up the Rocks, but he has Toxic and he would have caught the Rotom on the Switch. And he's just gonna Toxic again, okay, he did Rocks. I thought he would Toxic. But let's just look at this really quick. He Volt Switch and the Dagi to Screech this and then Z Move blows away the Clefable. Moonblast only did uh, like 65. He let the Hera get toxic. He stayed in regular form, which means he has Moxie. And then the Zard came out. And Flame Victini doesn't have good switch ins. He might go hard into Guard Shump if he Scarf. But let's go back to the Jammed game. Oh, that, he didn't, they didn't make a play yet. Nice. So we didn't miss any moves. Because uh, Flame Victini, like. I think he's really good and I, I love how he builds. And I think he's 2 0 at the moment. I haven't seen Guao play if I remember correctly. He goes in Guard Shaman is that why. So this is either Citrus or Scarf or Z move. He does not get burned. Guao is going to be forced out into his Mew or his Rotom here. Because I wouldn't go Ferrothorn. When the sun is up, he can go for Fire Blast and roast you. Uh, Flamic Team might double switch here. His Heracross is poisoned, which means the Mew can't will wisp it. So if he predicts the Mew, he can double into Heracross here. Because he kind of wants to get rid of the rocks, so the Mew is like obvious, right? Because he wants to defog for his Zard. So a double switch that pressures the Mew would be a really good play. So if he has, or if he has Dragon Tail on this, but I don't think he has Dragon Tail on this. But yeah, Jam decided to Roost, I assume, and the Manectric. Oh, he doubled out into Venus. So okay, never mind. Jam is trying to come back somehow to get up the Mega and um, get bulkier with his Venusaur. A sludge bomb, and if he gets like a poison or something, it would have been really nice. Because if he got a poison, he could have recovered synthesis stalled. He does get crit. Oh my god. So if he got the poison there, he could have just synthesis stalled this out. That would have been really nice. But the thing is, if Tapu Lele comes in, it gets a kill anyway. It's like, I don't think Gem can prevent that. Switch it out into Manta, and I think he predicted um, a potential double switch into Tapu Lele. And with the extra turn of leftovers, if he got it correct, he might have been able. He would have been at like 44%, um, so he might have been able to live a Psychic from Tapu Lele. Um, I want to calc that real quick. If he would have been able to live that, it was a really nice play by Jam, but it just didn't work. Mantine. I think he has like 16 in speed death. That would have been a roll if he has 16 in speed death. Is he going to double again? Yeah, he does double. So like you see Jam is trying his best to like come back, but it's just hard. Because now Tapu Lele... Oh wow, I thought he would go Tapu Lele. Oh, never mind, never mind. He made the double so he could click Gun uh, Yeah, yeah, so he was never going to... He was not risking the Tapu Lele, obviously. I thought... For some reason I thought Meeps had the momentum and could bring um, something in on a free switch with Volt Switch. But since Gem made the double into Venusaur, he was obviously clicking uh, either Giga Drain or Sludge Bomb there. So he was not going hard Lele and risking that. 
he's still he's still gonna keep his heat turn in the back because it like walls the gen mega unless he made it hp ground but he has a duck tree so it's pretty obvious that he didn't make it hp ground like psychic is gonna get a kill here i assume he's gonna sack off the the mantra and he can still get its speed boost with the Mega, but the combination Manectric lives any hit because it's at full Heatran checks it pretty well so I think like Jammed is in a pretty tough spot but he can potentially win with some air slash for the late game we'll see what happens so he did double out he did go into Rotom so it's FD it's gonna be Z-move chomp then probably gonna go for the devastating drag and um, he did predict that and go into Pharaoh Zone and this that did 69 oh my god Oh, it's called Raytron. That's my man Raytron. He's on Team Brazil. He's a sub. He did break the Earthquake pivots back into Rotom Wash. So, is he gonna click Outrage here and kill off the Pharaoh Thorn? He did just kill Outrage, pick off the Pharaoh Thorn. Back into Kaldio, so. I don't know if Skull's killed from 43. So, he might go for Hydro Pump. If Skull doesn't kill. Yeah, he sacks off the um, the Mantine. Goes back into the Unmega. Is going to protect to get its speed boost. And now he has to go for flinches or crits. Oh, he had to go for Digo. He did, for, he did go for double protect and he just forfeited. He didn't get it. It probably was a sp it's a speed tie, but if Jamvet is modest Yamega, I don't remember. If he might be modest Yamega. Yeah, if he's modest Yamega, the double protect was all but like he had to go for double protect to outspeed this. So yeah, Jamvet just couldn't come back from that if he was modest. If he was timid. I mean I can understand why you would be modest, you'd probably need the power. Like how much special attack does Yan Mega have? Um 116. So yeah, Jamvet loses which is sad to see, but this this game was still kind of cool to watch. Hope you guys liked it as Skull does pick it off. I assume that was like... Oh, Garchomp versus Keldeo. Yeah, the, if he got Min, he could have lived if it's Scarf killed. It should be Scarf Keldeo looking at his team. But the rule was highly in his favor. And... I think Brazil is not looking too good at the moment. They're 12 and 15. So they're, they're definitely... If they, I don't know if they still have a chance to make playoffs, but if they have a chance, they definitely have to win this game. They have to win like every game that they have left. So he goes in the Heracross. This is probably locked into Scald. Uh, Zard can come in because it cannot switch in because it's at 1% after Rocks. Um, so he doesn't have to predict the Zard and go for Rock Blast because that's low anyway. The only thing you might have to predict is between Pin Missile Ling if he predicts the Mew or between just Close Combat if the Kelt stays in. I think he needs the Kelt for the Greninja. So the Rotom is gonna get blown away by CC here. Um, I assume he had some Spadef on this Rotom. So he just died and most Heracross went Adamant just because they want the power to wall break. The thing is, if he goes into Mew, he will have. If he has Psychic, one, I don't know if it kills. Two, even if it kills, he will not be able to defog if he if he um, just attacks the Herald Cross, which means Zard will be super low. And I don't see Zard doing too much. I haven't caught the the damage from the. I haven't caught the damage from the Zapdos because I'm thinking that Flame Eighteen he might be offensive Zapdos and even not speed the Zard if it's modest. It just goes in the Kaldio. I assume he's gonna click uh, Hydro Pump or Secret Sword. Uh, Hydro Pump probably kills the Herald Cross with the Spadef drop. Uh, it might not even kill though, Herald Cross. Yeah, Hydro Pump does not kill, I don't think, with minus one Spadef. That's 78 to 92, so Hydro Pump does not kill. And Close Combat does kill the Kaldio. I mean, he needs a high, he needs a good roll to kill, unless he has some tech here. But I think Flame Vitini wants to save this Heracross because he has like, yeah, exactly. 
So that was a good play by Goao. He made the necessary double into Mew. Like he was so far in the back if he had a pumps there and lets this come in for free. Like I, I understand like Heracos could have lived on a roll but Flaming Teeny has no reason to risk it. He did get off the defog and... I don't know if Zardlov is CC from 51. Um, it does not live a CC so Zard cannot switch in even if he goes for CC. Um, Zard can switch in on a pin missile though. Pin missile does 30 to 35. Did any other game start? I would prefer to only have two games in this video. Yeah, that's the game si Gen 6 game going on. Um, but yeah, Team um, US Central is coming back. Like they won, they just won versus Jam, so that scores. Is it 12 12 or 13 12? I think it's 12 12, yeah. So yeah, this is kind of tough between... Okay, he just goes for Pin Missile, which is like the best move he has to... to <laughs> Why can I not talk sometimes? That was the best move he had to hit the Mew, and was... Even if he goes Zard there, he would have still be brought down, got brought down pretty low. And Flaming Victini still has an extra sack, so he's still in a better position. Also, this Heracross lifts any hit from the Kelt, unless he has some hidden tech like hidden power flying like hydro pump we saw it like it doesn't do much this time he does not have this um this time he does not have the defense drop and my calc still have the defense drop in spadef yeah it does 52 to 62 so heracross lives so he's gonna click close combat here and kill this um wow what why did he switch i mean i understand that goao has to make some plays but like Maybe he's max speed and that was obvious that he's max speed and he doesn't have the HP investment. Could have done 67, how healthy is he? Yeah, even then it doesn't kill. Um, I think... Maybe Flame Victini doesn't have anything else to kill the Mew. That's just, Maybe Flame Victini saved his Heracross because he doesn't have anything to kill the Mew. If that is the case, that makes sense. So maybe I just didn't think that through clearly. But... Yeah, if Gunja is probably Scarf, so that can't beat the Mew. But the thing is he has Discharge and a Zapdos, so he can paralyze the Mew eventually. How did the Heracross get poisoned, by the way? The opposing set ungodly use Toxic. Yeah, it's fast Zapdos as I expected, and he gets the para, this game is over. Oh, he got poisoned by the Duck Tree, okay. The saying, of course. I mean, I don't think that mattered. That was in Flaming Victini's favor anyway. Like, he outsped and 2 KO'd this. And if Goao switches this out into Mew, there's always the chance that Mew gets paralyzed. If Mew gets paralyzed, Heracross outspeeds it and blows it away. But yeah, I can completely understand why Goao made the double. And why Flaming Victini saved this Heracross. Because the Mew can become really annoying. That was just my fault. Like, I, sometimes I don't think about every single option. It's, it's it's especially kind of hard when I cover two games in one video and and I wasn't uh, watching the game from turn one. But not to make excuses, just saying. Like, I obviously make mistakes. Every now and then, or like here and there, however you want to say that. But yeah, I'm going to start my second laptop after this game in case... This happens again multiple games at once. I can record the second game with my second laptop and re-narrate over the game tomorrow. So it's, it reveals Ice Beam. He did roost off. I mean, I assume the Zapdos is faster than the Mew, but he might have been scouting for Toxic, even though it's pretty obvious that he doesn't have Toxic when he showed Willow's Defog. So last move is going to be Softball, and then now he showed Ice Beam. Um, the nerf, the T-Wave nerf makes it so the Zard still outspeeds. I assume he's gonna roost or flamethrower, yeah. Mm. I think this is Scarf Greninja. So if he has like a 100% accurate move, he's gonna click that. I'm not sure if U-turn will kill from 7%. If U-turn kills from 7, he's gonna click U-turn. Yeah, he clicks it. See, that does nothing to the Mew. That's what I was talking about. Mew can potentially 1v1 Flaming Teeny's team. Which explains the play from earlier where you saved the Heracross, like... 
Because the Hydro Pump plus the poison damage would have probably killed the Hera. Hydro Pump itself wouldn't have. But like sometimes I'm just not, I'm just thinking this Mon cannot kill this one. But I have to also think about what happens if he loses that Mon. Then he can then he could have lost to Mew. I mean at least I realized it in the video. Like I'm glad I caught caught this in the video why he made that play. Sometimes I'm really confused and I. Sometimes I'm confused and I like um, realize my mistakes uh, too late, like when the video is already over. But yeah, I think Youth East, they are already qualified, they have been doing pretty well. Yeah, Heracross is free to click on um, Pin Missile here. As long as it doesn't miss, it gets a kill. Zardis at 7%, Mew, Mew cannot do anything, like he can't will with this. Because it's already poisoned. Ice Beam won't do enough, obviously. If he wasn't poisoned, maybe he could go for Ice Beam Freeze. No, I don't think he can freeze in the, when the sun is up. But yeah, if he, go, if he had like Will-O-Wisp... Like if this wasn't poisoned, he could have gone for Will-O-Wisp and maybe dodge. Like maybe he could have lived barely when he wisps this on like a few percent and roost up and go for a dodge. But yeah, the Mew is gonna go down. He does not miss the Pin Missile and this game is over. Flame Vitini is gonna go 3-0. Um, did, did he play Dex yet? Oh, maybe maybe he's maybe he's only one and oh at the moment. I have to check that. But yet, Heracross was only necessary to be the Mew. Now he can sack the Heracross. He misses, but it doesn't matter. At that point, Scarf Greninja plus Ferrostone had the game wrapped up. I mean, even Zapdos plus Scarf Greninja had it wrapped up. Like, those three months had the game so locked up for Flaming Victini. But thank you guys for watching. Flaming Victini packing up the win. I'm just making sure Flaming Victini is 2 0 or 3 0. I don't know if he has played all his three games yet. He's 2 0, so I think that was his third game. I don't think they updated the score yet. But look at East 17 and 5. They're doing super well now. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure, like I said, if this was a third or second game, but I think it was a third. Um, we can look at this um, Auras game here real quick. Between Shield Shadow and Laz. Um, I think Laz is on Greece. Uh, which place is Greece? They have 11 and 14. So they don't have high chances to make playoffs. Uh, next round, I mean. I don't know if it's called play. No, it's called next round, right? Laz is 2 and 0 at the moment. Wow. And Shield Shadows on which team? Is he on Asia? Yeah, Shield Shadows 0 and 1 at the moment. He's on Asia. And I don't think Asia can make playoffs. Well, it's highly unlikely at least. But yeah, this game is gonna take a while, so I'm not sure. I'm I don't think I will add. Um, I don't think I will record this in this video. So thank you guys for watching. I might do an extra video on this. And Doc Rich signing out.